He is truly an Oklahoma son, born in 1925 on a ranch near Bushyhead in Rogers County. This great nephew of Will Rogers has carved out a rich legacy. From state senator to congressman to an iconic figure in rodeo circles, he has lots of tales to tell. So saddle up, partners, because we're in for a mighty fine time. It's an honor and a privilege and just a sheer delight to welcome Clem McSpadden to our Metro studio. And I mean every word of that. I'm so happy Jerry, that you're here. you're so kind, and, and I'm so happy to be here with you. You've been one of my... My idols, I like. Oh my goodness! Lord, I oh. like you better than Katie Couric and those. Oh people. my goodness! Thank oh, you. Oh yeah, there's only difference. In <laughs> y'all's about four hundred thousand a month, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about that. But no, it's it's such a pleasure well, to be with you. Thank you. You humble me with those words. I have to congratulate you first, though, on the Western Heritage Award. I was in that audience that night. Yes, ma'am. You received the Chester A. Reynolds Award. That had to be an incredible evening for you and your family. Well, it was. It was to my family and I because. Uh, I was lucky enough to, in my formative years in announcing rodeos, early 50s, don't remember what year, 52 or 3. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, I, I met Mr. Reynolds. He was chairman of the board of the H.D. Lee Company, ah. the jeans company, uh -huh. and uh, their offices are in the St. Joe, Missouri. At that time, uh, St. Joe had one of the best rodeos in the country because it was the week before the old Madison Square Garden Rodeo. This is all before the national finals rodeo ever started. So every champion, you know, the Jim yeah. Shoulders, the Harry Tompkins, all those guys would be at the, at St. Joe. And I met uh, Mr. Reynolds. And there you were, receiving and, an award in his honor. Yeah, and uh, having known him. And for the first year or two, he didn't have any uh, PR effort. Yeah. Uh, he got three announcers and asked all of us to give a uh, little ad lib uh, promos mm -hmm. for the idea of a Cowboy Hall of Fame, and uh, that's kind of how it caught on. He was a he was a little man in stature, but good gosh. In, big uh, in every other way. Oh, huh? good Lord. Big as a uh, uh, wilted steel chimney. Yeah. All right. Let's roll back the clock about 80 years or so okay. to a little boy growing up on a ranch near Bushy mm -hmm. Head, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and as the great nephew of Will Rogers, which is just mind-boggling to me, give me an idea of how that growing up shaped you. Well, uh, uh, Uncle Will called Dad when I was two, which was in 1927, and asked him if he uh, would, uh, you know, come manage the ranch, run the ranch, uh -huh. the Rogers Ranch. And his father, Clem Rogers, and you're named after yes, Clem Rogers, okay. had settled in what is now Rogers County before the Civil War, had a trading post and ran some cattle. So, uh, you know, our roots are pretty deep in that part of the uh, in that part of the state. And you still live. Right, yes, ma'am. Yes, right, ma'am. Uh -huh. We still have the old place that my grandparents, uh, Tom and Sally McSpadden, Sally Rogers married Tom McSpadden, mm -hmm. and they established a little ranch place in 1885, and we still have that. So it was in your bones, but I don't think you envisioned uh, announcing rodeos and being in rodeo circles back no, then. No, uh, you? Uh, you learned, uh, you know, this was the Depression, yeah. and we were out in the country five miles and uh, no close neighbors, and uh, it was an entirely different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And you learned to work cattle horseback. You didn't work them in pickups or anything then. Mm -hmm. And uh, you you learned to be around around horses. Then naturally you learned to be around uh, some rodeo events, and almost every ranch kid aspired to be uh, a professional uh, rodeo person, right. a roper or a bulldogger. Probably. And you did some of that, too, Yes, ma'am. I roped, I roped and bulldog. Not very well, but I, but I did. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to some milestones along your life path because it is just an unbelievable life path. And you spent some time in the Navy during World War II. Yes, ma'am. openers, right? Two, a little over two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any any uh, recollections from those days? That no. It out? was, uh, I kind of hate to tell it, I didn't even get overseas. And uh, they were trying to, uh, oh, the Navy has a lot of strange laws, and some of their <laughs> laws, uh, every vessel has to have a, an officer. Mm -hmm. And they were making all those uh, invasions yeah. in the Pacific, uh, you know, in, in little bitty boats, eight and ten people. Mm -hmm. Well, they had to somehow crank out a bunch of boot ensigns. And so I was fortunate enough to uh, pass a test and uh, get in that program, and I uh, Went to school for seven semesters, and by that time I had enough uh, enough uh, stuff for discharge and stuff for 
uh, a commission. And ah. so, no, I, I wasn't a veteran. <laughs> yeah, I was a veteran, but, but I, I didn't yeah. do anything. OSU was a highlight oh, for God, you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we walked on in, uh, in uh, 43, my senior year. You walked on the yes, basketball ma team. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, and uh, of course, who was coach? Oh, uh, Mr. Iber. Oh, gosh. Ah. Joe Shoulders and I roomed together. Uh, Joe was uh, Jim's brother, mm -hmm. and uh, we had played against each other. He played for East Central over near Tulsa, and I played for Uluga. And so we walked on together and played under Mr. Iba. And my job with a guy named Marvel Trask, because we were at the low end of the total bowl, they only had about 16 coming out that year because this was right in the height of the war. Yeah. Uh, we were we taught or helped teach mm -hmm. Bob Curlin to uh, ten ten goal, and each afternoon we'd uh, two on one him and you know you'd fake him out of his uh, <laughs> socks, and at that at that uh, point in time, and uh, but the greatest thrill I've ever had from any living person was in my unsuccessful race for governor, Mr. Ibe endorsed me, oh, and I wouldn't thrill, take. Yeah. All the money in Fort Knox for hmm. for that, you know, it just that just doesn't happen. Now that was kind of the culmination of your political career because, um, and we haven't even talked about the rodeo yet, but you were state senator yes, for a long time, 18 right? years. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, was that something that that you really enjoyed, or oh, did yes, you I fall enjoyed. into that? Or? Yeah, I enjoyed it. it uh, uh, as I've told a lot of people, uh, I've lived in two arenas all of my life: the rodeo arena and the uh, the political arena, and there's a bull in each of them. Uh, the bull in the, uh, the rodeo arena is a lot more genuine. But no, I enjoy. You're working with people. You're working with people. Mm -hmm. And just maybe you'll be the person who gets to the right place at the right time mm -hmm. to uh, pass a certain bill or get something worthwhile get something. done. something. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma and is that the same way you felt about Congress? That had to be an entirely different arena in some ways. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it's in, entirely different. And uh, I didn't really care that much for Congress. Uh, I think it's bad. You should go to Congress if you're 30 years old, young, <laughs> and you don't have a family to worry about. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go get some seniority. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I had... In other words, I'd been in, in the Senate for 18 years and been pro tem a couple of times, and you kind of get to thinking, you know, you, you know, you got a pretty good stick and, yeah. and you can run things. It, it ain't so up there, mm -hmm. and you're you're a little fish you know, in a big pond. Yeah, you sure right. are. I didn't detest it, but the thing that I didn't like, uh, it wasn't Oklahoma, and uh -huh. there wasn't anything to do when you got through with your work in the afternoon like yeah. there is here in Oklahoma City. Now, I know you kind of fell into rodeo announcing in Iowa, and we don't have a lot of time left, but how did that mushroom into such a career? Oh, I don't know. I just uh, was competing at a little rodeo at Story City, Iowa, and the last performance rained out, and they held it over the next day, and oh, didn't even charge the admission. Maybe 50 people came and needed somebody to announce for those few that wanted to compete. And so I did, then we went straight to Davenport, and they hired me for $25 a performance. Wow. And I was lucky enough to win the calf roping, $286. So I got out of there with $386. Thought I'd never see another poor day. <laughs> but uh, you did see a few poor days after Oh, that. gosh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you still hold uh, an annual rodeo. Event, yes, ma'am. I have right? a, a, a pasture team roping uh, there at the ranch at Bushy Head. And we score the cattle 101 feet uh -huh. instead of 10 or 12 like they do in most arenas. And uh, we rope for two days, and we'll have, uh, oh gosh, we had 188 teams last year mm. from uh, about six or seven states and pay off about $70,000. I knew time was going to go like wildfire, but before we say goodbye, I know you need to brag about your family and especially your wife, Donna, a little bit. Because... Well, I'll tell you about Donna. Uh, first of all, she's my best friend, and uh, she can... Walk her angels, <laughs> uh, choose not to tread, and uh, she has been the glue that's held us together. Because mm -hmm. when you're a politician half the year and gone, uh, 
traveling to rodeos mm. the other half of the year and gone, somebody's got to run things. And she has done that for me, and I can never repay her for it. She's, a, she's the glue that has held our outfit together. It has been an honor to have you here today. I've enjoyed every second. You know how much fun it's been for me. Has it been a lot of fun? Yes, I hope so. Yes, ma'am. Uh, will you come back? Because no, I know you come to town quite sure, a bit. Sure, sure. All right, we'd love to have you back. Love talk to come some back. More. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.